Hello, hello. This is Irene with Soga Talks. Hello, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you. If you're not following Soga Talks on LinkedIn, on Twitter, if you're not subscribed to YouTube, please do it now, all right, just to get it out of the way. I speak with fascinating people in tech here, all right, and we discuss artificial intelligence, data science, metaverse, automation, bunch of incredibly hot topics right now. And today, my guest is Suraj Gajendra. Suraj, how are you? I'm good, Irene. How are you? I'm doing incredibly well because guess what? The topic we're going to talk about today is all about enterprise and strategy and increasing performance and really helping companies out there to survive and thrive in this economic landscape. Technology is a unicorn. Okay, yeah. in a lot of way, yeah. technology is driving changes in business nowadays. All right. So can you talk to us about state of AI today in 2023, meaning widespread adoption and what's for us in the future? Yeah, I mean, I think um, thanks, I think, by the way, for this opportunity. So it's great to be with you. I mean, I've watched some of your videos and, and you know, they're really, really thought provoking. You talk to some extremely, extremely intelligent people out there. So, you know, the work that you're doing is fantastic. So, and thanks, thanks for inviting me. So I feel that we are at an inflection point in the journey to autonomous, right? So that's, that's what I like to call it, journey to autonomous. Um, yes, there's been a lot of experimentations over the last few years, but I think we are at a point where you know, we kind of um, are seeing new applications being developed based on AI, right? So we are not yet there where, you know, we can even remotely say that artificial intelligence can be on par with human intelligence or whatever. I mean, there's still a lot of work that we need to do in general, maybe the generative AI stuff that you see these days are, uh, uh, you know, are, are maybe autonomous cars, for example, right? So there's, there's still a long way to go, but but I feel, you know, we'll eventually get there, right? And, and we are making some rapid, rapid progress in that space. So, you know, I think, you know, for AI to get broadly, you know, adopted across, across different industries like healthcare or manufacturing or banking or financial in general, I think we need to kind of like, you know, have a couple of fundamental, you know, steps that we need to take. One is we need to collectively build a broad, open, flexible ecosystem of hardware, software tools, and, and applications across the industry, so which can enable data scientists, data engineers, or even AI developer community to be able to innovate on. Right. So this is uh, uh, this is this is work in progress at the moment, and and I will talk more about it. Right. And on the other hand, you know the accuracy of any AI model, you know, basically relies on the you know the, the data that that it gets fed on or, or trained on. So any new data set or either like, you know, that is not digitally documented or, or you know, not, not you know, the, the models doesn't have access to can't be used for training. So, you know, so there was always be this barrier about, okay, what data is available for training, right, for, for the models to kind of work on and, and, and what is not. So, and, and that's what, you know, you can also look at it as like a barrier for, uh, you know, for, for AI to kind of, you know, uh, uh, get as close as possible to the human intelligence, but also uh, that's where more innovation uh, and, and, and more work is actually needed for us to kind of enable the availability of data, the accessibility of data for, uh, for us to have better you know, AI models. Absolutely, absolutely, Suraj. I'm glad you brought this up because one thing is to start an experimentation with AI, right? And most companies kind of at this stage. What about scaling? Okay, is it easier? Is it cost effective? Is it better for companies out there these days than comparing right a few years ago? Yeah, I mean, great, great, great point, right? I think see, fundamentally, I mean, what I what I feel is again before we talk about scale. Let's just understand who are the players in the space, right? On one front, you have hyperscalers, cloud service providers, or uh, you know, uh, uh, AI research companies like OpenAI, for example, just pushing the boundaries of compute with their innovation in large-scale models and enabling you know massive AI-enabled applications. I mean, based on large language models, for example, or diffusion models that you actually see. So for them. 
it's it's really you know the the value that they are actually trying to extract is optimized models how better they can actually make those models how accurate they can actually make those models and 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 their expectations from a scale perspective is availability of performance systems right i mean i'm not just talking about hardware but but software infrastructure and all of that stuff ease of use right and and reduced operational cost and you know and and power right i mean that's you know we're all talking about green ai we're all talking about climate change it's very important for all of these large scale you know people working on these large scale models to fundamentally kind of ensure that the the computation that they do is actually done efficiently at a very power optimized way so so that's you know one class of players, right? So, and then there is the other class of players with you know enterprises, for example, right? Who would want to kind of make use of applications based on these models that are trained. So for them, the the scale is really kind of like uh, you know enabled through ease of use, right? So you're talking about you know companies like you know who are in the healthcare business or or financial or industrial or automotive who, uh, you know, basically there's an abundant amount of data available, right? Now, they need to basically figure out how can they use the data and build accurate models or, you know, or use pre-trained models or fine-tune those models and build much better efficient productivity tools for them, right? Uh, in order to kind of like improve the improve the effectiveness of, or, or in, you know, or even enable new services. So for them, you know, the, the key thing is ease of use, right? So, um, so you know, they they want to be able to kind of like say, okay, you know, can I can I get a platform which has the hardware, which has the right amount of software, the tools, and 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 everything that they can actually take and just work on data analytics, right? So, so I think it's again, you know, depends on whom you talk about talk to when you when you think about AI scale, and and for enterprises, I truly believe that it's. It's 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 our responsibility. When I say our responsibility, people who are enabling the AI hardware, people who are enabling the AI software tools, and even people who actually work on large scale models, it's it's our responsibility collectively to ensure that there is open, flexible platform for you know data scientists in enterprises to basically work on and 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 build on. Right. So that's that's the way I basically see scale. 